Hi, RUCC. Um, welcome on this very special day, uh, the first Sunday after the declaration by State President on the measures and the steps that we have to take in helping to curb the spread of this virus. Um, if you ask me the truth, I'm very excited to know, in knowing that this is the most opportune time for us as God's people to show what we are made out of. Uh, the God that we serve knows no limits, knows no boundaries. As RUCC, the omnipresent God, God who's there all the time, everywhere. He started off with us in 2017 by encouraging us to declare with our voices into 2020 a message that has become so relevant all of a sudden, message of life. At the time, we never knew what was coming uh, ahead of us, but we obeyed his instructions and we diligently began to declare both in word and in deed what was to come in 2020. So here we are, March 2020, the whole world is shaken by this virus. Um, but what excites me is that you and I, who have been declaring this for the last three years, the words that we have been speaking have come to create an environment of health, an environment of safety, an environment of joy and peace against fear. Peace for us. So we are living in that realm right now of enjoying, if you will, the preparation that was done three years ago. Two years ago, a year ago rather, God told us to make these declarations over the congregation every Sunday. The healthiest people, the most prosperous people, the most industrious people, the happiest people. What were we doing? We were talking into this present moment, a moment of fear, a moment of discouragement and despondency. We were talking to this moment, talking what? The Word of God. Because he gave us a scripture, I'll read it out to you, where we took the theme of our declaration. It's in the first book of John, chapter 2, from the message translation, verses 24 and 25, reads as follows. Stay with what you heard from the beginning, the original message. Let it sink into your life. If what you heard from the beginning lives deeply in you, you will live deeply in both the Son and Father. Here is the punchline. This is exactly what Christ promised. Eternal life, real life. It is on that basis that we began to declare this. It is on that basis that we began to announce in the spiritual realm that in 2020 we are going to walk in the dimension of life, real life, eternal life. It's big, it's here, and it's mine. What is that? Life. The kind of life we are talking about is not just merely breathing in and out. But it's entering the zone, if you will, of God's kind of life, Zoe. God said to us, when everybody is scattering around, we will enjoy the kind of life that God has. According to John chapter 10, verse 10, the last portion. He says, I've come so that they may have life and have it abundantly. It is not just barely making it, hanging by the skin of our teeth, barely surviving, no. It's life in its abundance. God wants us to enjoy life abundantly. Now you will ask me, but pastor, how realistic are we that in this era, at this stage where there is so much panic that we can walk out there and come with a negative, or rather a, an opposite spirit. Yes, that's our calling. We were never called to conform to this world and its systems. 
were never called to do that. We were called to be different. Jesus said, I don't light, put on the light, the lamp, and, and hide it under a table. He says, I switch on the lamp and put it on top of the table so that whoever is in the room will be able to access that light. He said, we as God's people are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So I want to say to us, at this moment of fear and darkness and depression and gloom, maybe it is time that we arise and shine for our light has come and the glory of God has risen upon us. It is right here, right now, where wherever you are, whether it's in your house, in your job, wherever you are, when everybody is ducking and diving, arise and shine. It's not arrogance. It's confidence and boldness in Jesus. The writer in the book of Hebrews says, may we never lose the confidence of our confession. So I want to encourage us as a church that we understand God's timing. We understand God's way of doing things. And we align ourselves through obedience to what God wants us to be and what he wants us to say and do. So in this moment of despair, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God has risen upon you. It is not something that we do by our own strength. Zechariah tells us that it's not by might, it's not by power. It is all by the Spirit of the living God. So don't try to do this in your own strength, because if you could, then you wouldn't need a Savior. We need a Savior because it's Him who empowers us, who enables us. To live this kind of life and moreover when is it that you need light the most It's when there is darkness that scripture says deep darkness will cover the darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness the peoples of the earth but for us arise and shine we are not asking you to put your life at risk we will obey and oblige we will do what is right exercise hygienic practices which is common sense but we will not go into a cave and hide now because everybody wants to do that if there was ever a time that we should be visible it is now a time where you and I are going to stand our ground and let God be known by those who don't know him I started off by saying I am very excited Corona Corona. Sinalo elukunya se sebenza lo na gengu. Si vala umnyango wolo yigo. Asi upindi asi uvule. Si avala keka malinkos. Aku uko oko kunye. Oku ya upindi aku vele. Kuzi milisele. Kuinda we pagamile ingeli ilo ika malinkosu krestu. So it's the authority that we have in which we dethrone this spirit of fear. We dethrone the intended purpose of this outbreak. I'm not ashamed to say that. We dethrone it. We are frustrating it. We are destroying the master plan. We are bringing every intention to naught in the name of Jesus. The freedom and the liberty that we have in Christ will be known even by more who have not yet come to experience this because we will not be silenced. We're going to talk more about it. We will not listen to people who have never experienced what we have experienced in Christ. 
they have no qualifications to comment on that. But as for us who have walked with the Lord, by His grace, not because we are special, by His grace and our faith in the finished work of Jesus. This is our stand and this is our point. So, it is time that we declare publicly, real life, eternal life, not eternal as in after death, eternal as even now. What we're going to leave, we're going to leave it here and after. It's real. We are not pretending. We are not mimicking, imitating something or somebody. It's real because Christ came to give us life. And he has given it to us abundantly. And may I even go on to say, you don't need to be extra gifted and talented to be able to make these declarations. No. No. All you need is faith in Jesus. Jesus Christ put it this way. He says, if you have faith as small as the mustard seed, faith, as small as the mustard seed, he said, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed, it will move. So, child of God, the last three years has been like preparation ground, if you will, for the soldiers of faith. Now is the time for real battles. Let's get into the battlefield and stand and fight the good fight of faith. We had scriptures where God told us that the just shall live by faith. And so I want to bless you with this declaration that I'm going to make which we have been doing for a number of weeks now because I'm fully convinced about it um, it's David declaring this truth and we are owning up to that and we make it our own because the Bible has been written for us so that we may know that we have eternal life I want you to think about this this is what David says I look up, Psalm 121 in the TPT, I look up to the mountains and hills, longing for God's help. But then I realize that our true help and protection come only from the Lord, our Creator who made the heavens and the earth. He will guard and guide me, never letting me stumble or fall. God is my keeper. He will never forget me or ignore me. Listen to that. God is my keeper. He will never forget me nor ignore me. He will never slumber nor sleep. He is the guardian God for his people. Jehovah himself will watch over you and watch over me. He is always at our side to shelter us safely in his presence. Even if we don't feel his presence, it's got nothing to do with the feeling. As you walk out there exposed to the dangers of life, he is going to shelter us in his presence. He continues to say, he is protecting us from all danger, both day by day and night. Okay? Protected in all danger. He will keep us from every form of evil or calamity as he continually watches over us. Here is the punchline. You and I will be guarded by God himself. You and I will be safe when we leave our home and safely we will return. He will protect us now and protect us forevermore. I want to own up to that declaration every time, everywhere you go. That is life in Jesus. So I'm sharing this so that you can take a bit of courage and let your faith grow to heights that you've never dreamt of before. Masipumelenga apaya 
Sino kwa zuwenza nga pezu wende lebe skwa zingayo. Singa ma dota ka moya. Not kwa wesi ni badin teta ama dota ka moya. Masi pumele nga hapa usata ne zola kwa kwa ye bendi yenze la nile. Ngoba utiko nza ipinda. Uya izi susata ne zocha bala lezi utika ingagule. Aichike. Asebense yona libi zobulala. Ukwenza. Ukupete. So singena kwi tubage apu funa sbambe londo. Utumshabele li sbamba matinga. Owa teti leo strina mazwi. Ama tingo wa begleo. Sikrine amazwi. Owa teti leo. May God richly bless you. As you declare real life. Eternal life.